Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Angarella, uh, you and your July of last year, 2022 advisory notice, you mentioned that USAID planned to provide direct cash assistance uh, to Ukrainians for humanitarian needs. You also noted uh, that cash assistance comes with inherent risks. I think that's a pretty obvious statement, uh, particularly in a country that's 120th in the world on the transparency scale, uh, because it's highly fung fungible, difficult to track. So. Yeah, you know, we're talking about wartime aid. My colleague was just talking about wartime aid. Talk to me about how the dissemination of U.S. funds through direct cash assistance to Ukraine has differed within USAID and what lessons you've learned from direct cash assistance to Afghanistan. Sure. Thank you for that question. Um, the, the financial assistance through USAID is, is being provided in, in two ways. Uh, the majority of which is being provided in the direct budget support through the World Bank. Through the World Bank, right. Yes. And Got so it. that is the, those are the funds that um, are being transferred to the World Bank into three trust funds. And the, the World Bank as the trustee then disperses right. those on a reimbursement basis. The second area um, with significantly less money is in the humanitarian assistance portfolio. How much money? Right date. now, there's t in the in total humanitarian assistance portfolio, $1.4 uh, billion. Okay. That's not all um, cash assistance through humanitarian assistance. Um, there is a, a, a large portion, I'd have to get back to you on the specific number, that is going as either in-kind humanitarian assistance or cash to um, citizens in need in Ukraine. How do you oversee food. the disbursement of cash in a war zone? So what we do is we partner and we have the oversight authority for the um, either contractors or in this case, some of the UN organizations um, and, and USAID contractors that are doing the work. So we have authority to oversee the-, the Are the they contracted firms, Ukrainian firms? No, no, they're, they're, they're non, firms? most of these are non uh, NGOs that USAID has longstanding relationships with. And we as the IG have longstanding relationships with them. and. Um, regularly interact with them. So some of the 20 fraud awareness briefings that I mentioned and the thousand people that our investigators have gone and done um, fraud awareness briefings for. How many USAID employees from OIG or otherwise are in Ukraine? Right now, right. Uh, my understanding is USAID, the agency, has seven um, employees uh, working specific and direct hires. And there's a cap on the number of personnel at the embassy, correct? correct. And we would have no Would you be able to, personnel. and would you want to, I would hope, send more direct U.S. government personnel to both oversee the contractors and directly oversee the aid, if allowed? Absolutely. And How many more would you send? Right now, we've requested at a minimum to have two law enforcement criminal investigators. We actually had two that were able to go TDY this week are to these, build those relationships. Are these the seven that you do have, which I would postulate is a pittance compared to one of the largest humanitarian, direct budget, and military aid programs, uh, uh, probably the largest since World War II, yet we have self-capped, the White House has capped, the number of people that we can have there from the U.S. government and from the IGs. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And those, just to clarify, those seven direct hire staff are for USAID, the agency, not the IG. They're not dedicated to the You have no IG position. personnel permanently stationed in Ukraine? Correct. Would you like to? Yes, and we, we are like actively we are actively uh, pursuing. Why that. are you being told you can't? We we have not been told that we cannot. Um, we've received support from the, this is a State Department process. So when we were in Kiev in January, we received support from Ambassador Brink and from the State Department, and we are now going. I know the through. ambassador wants more. I asked her. Yes, so we are actively going through the State Department's process on getting those approved spots. Do the contractors, since you can't have direct folks there, do the contractors have direct access into the ministries, into their financial systems? The Deloitte contractors that are operating on behalf of USAID, my understanding is yes. Um, under the MOU, the bilateral MOU that USAID has with the government of Ukraine, um, Deloitte, USAID, and our staff would have direct access to those to That's systems. reassuring. I think your efforts as IGs are reassuring. My message to, and please take this back to both aid and state, uh, is that there is a direct correlation to continued domestic support to your ability to be able to get in theater and do your job. And we cannot artificially constrain ourselves 
provide all of this aid, but then not allow you to go provide appropriate oversight. And I hope we learn the lessons from Afghanistan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield my time. The gentleman yields.